All right, let's go ahead and talk about three mistakes that students commonly make when dealing with identifying the center and the vertex of a circle. So in this equation, or in this example, we have all three equations of a circle. Now, there are two forms of equation of a circle that we need to make sure we understand so we can identify why these mistakes make sense or why they happen. So the two equations that I have is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now this is going to be when we have a circle with a center at the origin. And here we have x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared um, equals r squared. And this is gonna be when we have a circle with a center outside of the origin. Now the x and y represent all the points that are gonna make up your circle. R is gonna represent the radius. That's gonna be the distance from the center to any point that lies on the circle. And in this case, H and K are gonna represent the center of the circle. So obviously if that was zero, zero, like if the center was zero, zero, we wouldn't need to subtract by um, H and K, and that's why you get this formula. All right, so let's go through the mistakes, the most common ones students make all the time. The first one, students will say, Mr. McLuggan, the radius is going to equal two, a 25. And no, like we love when we see a square number at the end, but ladies and gentlemen, the radius is not going to be 25. Remember guys, the formula is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So it's x squared plus y squared equals what number squared equals a 25? That's going to be a five squared. So therefore we can say the radius is going to equal a five, not a 25. So let's not make that mistake. The next one happens again for everyone. So don't feel stupid. It happens all the time. I even make this mistake a lot of times. So take a deep breath, go slowly, and don't make this mistake. So a lot of students will understand, ah, okay, radius is three, not gonna make that mistake again, right? You usually do it once, and then you're like, I'm not doing that again. But then this next one, this one's gets confusing. So the way I like to actually rewrite this equation so you can see it is with additional parentheses. Now, the reason why I wrote additional parentheses is because I really want you to identify what are the values of h and what are the values of k. Because remember, the center is going to be h comma k. So whatever those values are, that is going to be the center. So a lot of students will assume that the center is going to be at a five comma negative three. Because Mr. McLogan, I see a five, I see a negative three. That's your h and k, we're done. But remember guys, it's about the formula. It's x minus h plus y minus k quine squared x minus h, y minus k. So it might be helpful to even put parentheses in this formula so you can see what exactly are going to be the values of h and k, right? This is incorrect. The values of h is going to be a negative five. The value of k is going to be a positive three. So the center in this case is actually a negative five and a positive three. And again, if I simplify this, a lot of students are like, well, how do you go from a plus to a negative. Well, remember, x minus a negative is the same thing as adding, right? So therefore, you can see how that happened. Now, on the last example, a lot of students will make a mistake here. And the reason why they make a mistake is they say, well, what do I do with these twos in here? Now, notice, go back to the formula I provided you. The formula over here did not have any coefficients of your x and your y squared, or the quantity x minus h squared and y minus k squared. Like, they didn't have those. So wh what do we do with these twos? Well, we gotta get rid of them. So how do we get rid of the twos? Well, divide by two on both sides. Now, a lot of times students don't wanna do this because they see 16 and they say, oh, 16 R squared. I know the radius is going to be a four. That's easy, crap. But now what if I divide by two, I'm gonna get eight and that's not gonna give me a, uh, an integer radius. But guess what? That's okay. All right, so now again, we recognize here. Now this one doesn't have anything to subtract by, right? It's X minus nothing, right? So therefore we can say it's going to be a zero. So the center in this case is going to be a zero. And then here, remember, it's the opposite value. So therefore, it's going to be a negative seven. And now the radius, we just need to say, well, what, is, what number squared equals eight? So we could say r squared is equal to an eight. Take the square root of both sides. Now, we don't want to use a decimal equivalent, equivalent like 2.82824271. What we want to do is simplify this radical. You can leave it a square root of eight, but typically we like things simplified. So I can re rewrite that as a four times two. Take the square root of four, which is going to be a two square root of two. So therefore, my radius in this case is gonna be two, square root of two. Those are three mistakes, you don't make them.